that's a beautiful Y chub, about three pounds. And then um, taking that on a nice bread flake on a bread feeder. So let's get him back and try and catch another. Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. And I'm fishing today on the beautiful River Wye, just below Hereford. Um, I'm just sort of grabbing a quick session, so I'm doing a more roving approach today. So I'm just traveling light. I've got my specimen rod, um, a bucket with some bait and my chair. And this is the first peg I've selected. You can see it's quite a, a confined peg. Um, the river's been up, the river was a good four or five foot up yesterday, um, but it's dropped overnight and it's kind of just on the cusp. I'd say it's about three foot up at the moment. And uh, I've decided to start off with bread, fishing bread flake on the hook and feeding a bit of uh, bread feed as well. And I just had a nice chub about three pounds. So I'm really pleased about that. So my sort of mentality today is I'm gonna pick different swims, different areas of the river to fish and target different fish. So with the bread flake, I'm kind of targeting chub, um, but I've also got some luncheon meat, I've got some pellets, I've got some worms. So I'm gonna try and see if I can catch a barbel as well, but let's just cast the bread out again. You can see I've got a, a decent piece of bread on there. I'm fishing with a, a size six hook and I've just got some white crumb in my feeder. And, uh, it's a bit tricky to cast, but I'm managing just to get it out and I'm just fishing down the middle of the river. I know this peg quite well and it's most of the flow and depth is down the middle towards the far bank on this peg. So I'm sort of ignoring the inside and I don't think it's deep enough. But uh, hopefully by fishing this feeder, I'll be attracting a few chub into the area and um, I'd actually missed a couple of bites before I had that first fish, so there's obviously some fish out there. Now you can see that I'm casting in front of myself, letting the feeder hit the bottom, and I'm putting a small bow in the line, and I'm keeping the rod right up to keep the line off the water. If I had the rod lower, I'd have to fish a much heavier feeder to hold the bottom because of the extra pressure on the line. Um, it's the end of October, and there's still some small fish in this area. It's quite interesting really. The, the river here through the summer is basically got all sizes of fish. You've got little bleak, dace, roach, through to the chub and barbel. And then when it comes to winter time, and we've had some frost, those small fish disappear. They uh, basically migrate up, up to Hereford. So when you're fishing this time of year, before those small fish have gone, you're kind of restricted to using bigger baits. Because if you fish maggots and casters, I'm not saying you wouldn't catch any better fish, but you'd get pissed pestered by the small fish. So that's why my emphasis today is fishing on bigger baits. That maybe that little bite I had was a, a dace or something like that, just having a go at the bread. So that cast, I didn't actually put anything in my feeder. I've just gone back out with the bread flake. Um, just want to see if I can catch, trick another chub before I start feeding again.
Whoa. Well, that was amazing. I basically cast out, the feeder hit the bottom and didn't, didn't settle. I'd hooked a chub and it feels like a really nice chub. I'm having to put a lot of side strain and pressure on it to get it away from these snags on the inside. But I'm using the 1.25 test curve specimen rod and it's definitely got the power to enable me to play fish like this in the flow. You can see it's bending beautifully. It's got tremendous power in the butt section and a beautiful progressive action. This is a bigger chub, I think. You've got to be careful when you're playing chub because any kind of snag they'll head for and try to nail you. So I'll try and get his head up now. Doesn't want to give up. It's actually a barbel. <laughs> I did think it was fighting a bit strangely for a chub. There you go. I have caught barbel on bread before, but it uh, just goes to show you never know. I was thinking I'd need to catch a fish meat or pellets for the barbel. I'll just revive him in the side before I bring him out. Not a monster, but we'll have a look at him. I think he's going to be five pounds. I'll just hold him up quickly for you. Very long, slim, sleek fish, that one. Great fun. And that was a good surprise on the bread. Well, as I mentioned in the introduction, I'm sort of targeting chub with the bread, but uh, it was a nice surprise to catch that barbel and have caught a few barbel over the years on bread. Um, normally when the river's really low and clear and cold, um, obviously bread's a, a brilliant bait in those conditions. And I think sometimes barbel, when it's cold, they don't want to eat something rich like a pellet or meat, something fatty. And uh, bread's something that's very light and something that can tempt them on a cold day. But uh, I wasn't expecting that in these conditions. But, uh, I'm going to keep fishing the bread for a bit. I've actually started firing a few bits of meat out as well. Um, just to see if uh, that was a bite and that's another fish. I was just saying if I could just try the... Is that another barbel? Feels like it might be. He's going upstream. I do think that's another barbel. But yeah, I was saying that it's quite a good tactic firing a bit of meat out as well. Um, just to give you a change bait. And I've got some nice lobworms. So uh, at the moment, I'm going to stick with the bread. You've got to use robust gear when you're fishing on the Y. I'm using 10 pound main line and I'm using a uh, eight pound fluorocarbon hook length. This feels like a better barbel. And I like to set my drag like that now so I can put the maximum pressure on the fish. Um, the Y has got lots of features like ledges and rocks and puts tremendous strain on your tackle so you need to use robust gear. I'm intrigued to see how big this one is. It's really fighting well. Probably going to make me look stupid and it'd be a big chub. I 
Whoa, that's a nice fish. Hey, we got him. I'd just like to let the barbel just recover in the landing net before I bring it out and unhook it. Make sure I've got my disgorger handy. That's absolutely beautiful. I haven't actually got any scales with me, which is a shame because I think that fish is nudging 10 pound. Not sure what chap he thinks he. Definitely. <laughs> it's a monster. I'm just gonna. Hold him up quickly for you. Let's try him nicely. Hold him up. There we go. Look at that. That's a beauty. Big, long, powerful Y barbel. You often find the Y barbel are very sleek, but it's not often you get a 10 pounder, but that's getting pretty close. What an absolute beauty. Let's get him back. Well, there we go. What an amazing fish and fully revived in the landing net and he's ready to go. So we'll just get his head out the net and he can swim off nice and strongly. Whoa. Well, that's made my day already. And I'm going to make sure I've set the drag this time. This CS10 5000 has got a beautiful drag. And that barbel took me by surprise, that big one. It took off, so I had to actually backwind. But I've set the drag now so that if I hook a big fish, I've got that bit of insurance policy that uh, the drag will kick in straight away. And like I say, when you've got such a beautiful, powerful, smooth drag, that's a great advantage to utilize it. So what's going to happen now? <laughs> two barbel in two casts. We'll see. Uh, See if we can get another but i love this type of fishing because because you're mobile um, i can fish different pegs during the day uh, perhaps target different fish and it just increases your chances you know i might have fished this peg and not caught so in my mind then you know i've got to move on and try a different spot um, it's a really enjoyable way of fishing and uh, in contrast to my match fishing really but i just really enjoy doing it so We'll definitely have another five or six casts here and then perhaps move further upstream and try a different spot. Well the 125 pound test curve specimen rod comes with two tops. I'm using the quiver tip top on this peg today with a four ounce tip. It's supplied with two tips, two carbon tips, a three and a four ounce. And the four ounce is just about spot on for this peg. You can see it's bending slightly, uh, bending slightly with the flow and the bow. Um, obviously the bites are positive anyway, so I don't want a, a softer tip than that. And uh, if the fish, if I was fishing a more powerful peg, then I'd be using the Avon top, which is basically a top without a, a quiver tip. And I think when I move upstream, I'm going to need to change to that because of the high water today and flow. Um, I think I'm going to need a, a stiffer tip, but we'll gauge that when we get to the other swims. But it, it just shows how versatile the rod is to to be able to fish with a quiver tip like this or with a, a standard Avon top. And of course, the Avon top is really useful for float fishing as well. But I don't think we'll get away with float fishing today. I just think the river's a bit too high and uh, I don't think float fishing is going to be an option. <laughs> Just missed a few quick bites on the bread. I mentioned I was feeding some some luncheon meat pellets like that. So I've been feeding them for about half an hour and I'm going to switch my rig now 
and try the, the meat. So I'm going to change over from the feeder. That's an 80 gram cage feeder that I was using with the bread, which was holding nicely. I'm going to swap over to a, a lead instead of the feeder. Um, and I'm fishing with a fairly short hook length today. That's probably about three foot. Sometimes I use a much longer hook length, particularly if the river's clear, but we've got some colour in the water and it's quite a snaggy peg, so I'm going to fish with a shorter hook length to start with. And I'm going to hair rig the meat on. Um, seems you could obviously put it directly on the hook, but I like to hair rig the meat most of the time. And the way I do it is I have a one of these bait bands on the end of the hair. I'm just going to mount that on the hair. And then I actually use a bit of an old school way of stopping it, a bit of spaghetti as a stop. I like the spaghetti because when it's been in the water, it just softens up. It's quite unobtrusive and it works well. So that's how I'm actually mounting the, the luncheon meat pellet. I've punched it out with one of these Simo punches. Um, and hopefully, obviously I've been loose feeding some, hopefully the fish have become accustomed to searching for that. We'll see if we can get a bite on that. I'm not going to give it a long because obviously I've already caught three wonderful fish out this swim. And uh, we'll move and fish somewhere upstream. I'm just going to just cast this a bit further downstream because obviously I've been loose feeding the meat. And that's going to float downstream before it settles. So we'll just try that first and see if we can get a bite. Well, second cast on the meat, and I've been rewarded by another chub. Not a monster, but I think you can still see the meat in his mouth, look. He just couldn't resist that, could he? Bit of a scrawny one, that one. He looks like he needs a bit of a feed up. Let's get him back. So I've moved up to another peg upstream of where I started. You can see here the river bends round and we're on the outside of the bend here. Um, so all the flow and power is coming over onto this bank. Um, so with the water on, that's really quite powerful. Uh, so I mentioned about the different tips on the specimen rods. And I'm actually going to swap over from the quiver tip top that I was using on that steadier peg and I'm going to switch over to the Avon top so it's obviously got a, a stiffer tip a stiffer action and that's going to cope with this extra power a lot better so we'll give that a go so just the nature of this swim uh, I know the peg quite well but I'm going to only going to fish about two rod lengths out most of the depths on this side of the river. Um, I know there's some big rocks on the bottom, so I'm going to try and find a, a clear spot and literally just fish just about a rod length out. Hopefully, see if we can catch a, a nice barbel or a chub. And I think on this peg, I'm going to start off. I'm going to start off on meat, but I'm going to feed some pellets through a block end feeder just to give me an option of fishing a pellet on the hook 
probably should be trying bread really after this morning's experience so we'll perhaps give bread a go as well but there's a few more pegs to try as well but uh, we'll give this one a go so there we go that's got the um, the Avon top now right then before I start I'll just run you through the the terminal tackle I'm using today and quickly explain how to tie the rig. So the real line I'm using is this 10 pound edge tackle specimen mono. I referenced earlier on when I was fishing downstream how important it is to fish with robust gear on the Y and this 10 pound line is very very strong and tough and reliable. Um, the hook lengths I'm using, I'm actually using Edge Pure Fluorocarbon. Uh, I've got three different hook lengths that I've been using from 023, which has a breaking strain of six pound. That's what I started on the bread. Um, when I hooked that barbel, I moved up to 025, which is seven pounds. And on this peg, because of the power, uh, I'm gonna move up to 030, which is uh, nine pounds. But I do really like fluorocarbon. It's uh, something I've used for some time for a lot of my specimen fishing. Um, obviously when it's clear, I think the fact that it's a very almost invisible line really helps in clear conditions. Uh, but I also find it very tough and robust. So moving on to the rig. This is the rig I tend to use for most of my feeder fishing or ledgering on rivers. And what I need is basically three components, very simple. I've got a Drennan gripper stop that I've threaded onto the main line. I've got a snap swivel which I've threaded onto the main line and then this is a Drennan swivel bead. So I've threaded those onto the line and what I do then is I make a loop. So I make a loop on the bottom around about six to eight inches. So I tie the loop I'm using my teeth I know I shouldn't but so I've now got a loop on the bottom of the main line which I thread the swivel on and I put the swivel by pushing the loop through the swivel eye and then putting the swivel back through the loop so it's kind of lassoed on very very neat very very strong knot and then I just simply put the the swivel bead over the top of that so that forms the bottom of the rig. Now that snap swivel runs up to that bead and then I just simply pull the gripper stop down over the top knot of that loop. So there you go and what that creates there is I've got a nice stiff section of line there which is doubled up in that loop which helps prevent tangles, stops the hook length from wrapping back around the feeder or the back of the lead. I've still got that bolt effect so the swivel is being stopped by that gripper stop but if I were to get snagged up whilst I was playing a fish that gripper stop will come off and move up the line and hopefully allow the feeder or the lead to free and it's happened many times I've been fishing I've got a good fish in and that gripper stops way up the line so if you fish the swivel inside the loop you run the risk of losing fish because of the hook length getting cracked off if the lead or feeder gets stuck. So there you go, that's the rig. Um, hook length wise, I'm using the same hook length I was using on the other swim with the meat. So it's around about three foot long. Um, I've got a size eight hook. Uh, the hooks I'm using today are these Corum power hooks. I, put, I was put onto these by Woody in the local tackle shop and I really like them. They're very, very strong, very, very sharp, and I think they really work well with the baits I'm using today. So bread, meat, pellets, worms. And um, I've actually got a size eight on at the moment because I'm using quite a big piece of meat, but obviously I might scale down to a 12 or even a 14 on, on smaller pellets, but that's the hooks. And simply put that on by threading the, the loop of my hook length through that swivel bead eye and there you go.
very simple, but a rig that I have total confidence in. Okay, so actually I'm not going to put anything in to start with, I'm just going to try some meat. I'm going to fish a lead, which is, say that's around about two to three ounces. Obviously I'll try that to start with, if that's not heavy enough, so if I cast in and the lead's bouncing, I'll fish a heavier lead. And let's get a bit of meat. So we'll fish a nice bit of meat. So push the meat through the baiting needle, hook the band, pull the meat through. Get a bit of spaghetti. Keep mine in a tube like that to keep it dry. Break a bit of spaghetti off, put that through the bait band, and that's my stop. Pull it all nice and neat and tight, and there we go. Let's try that. So I'm going to actually put the lead in slightly upstream. Feel it to the bottom, I can feel it on the bottom. And then I'm going to put a bit of slack line out, not too much. I'm just going to just fish that quietly just for five minutes, just to see if I can get one before I put any feed in. I don't know if Chappie can see, but the tip is set perfectly in the flow. So that stiffer tip now is just bending nicely into the flow. You can see there's knocks where perhaps some weed or the flow of the water is just catching it, but that tip's working well, it's not bending over too much. Well, there we go, I had a, a knock on the second cast, I actually put a feeder on and put a few bits of meat in and uh, I've got a fish now, I think it's a chub. It feels like a good fish. Let's have a look. It's a little barbel, a little baby barbel. Great. Well, that's nice to see. I have been catching quite a few of these small barbel this year on the Y, and uh, it's obviously fantastic. They're, they're obviously breeding well, and. That's absolutely beautiful, just about a pound, absolute perfection. Let's get him back. Perhaps see you in a few years when you're a double figure barbel. Brilliant. That's another fish. Feels like a chub, this one. Fighting really hard in the flow. There we go, nice chub. Brilliant. That is a nice job. Hook nicely in the corner of his mouth. He's got to be three pound that one. I do enjoy this kind of fishing, roving along and fishing different spots. Absolutely great sport.
Oh, there we go. Feels like another chub and uh, you can see they're really having a go in this flow but the rod's absorbing everything it really is a fantastic rod for playing fish like this. Let's see if I can get his head up. Oh it's another little barbel. How good's that? Looks like I found a nursery of barbel down here. About the same size as that one I had to start with. What a lovely little fish. Let's get him back nice and quickly. There he goes. Nice one. I'll just uh, reference the feeder I'm using. So I'm um, using a good piece of punch meat still. Haven't tried pellets yet. But I think a good piece of meat like that is going to provide plenty of smell and it's quite a, a big visible bait for the fish to see when you're fishing in these kind of higher water situations with lots of turbulent flow. And what I'm using is a, the cage feeder I was using when I was fishing with the bread. This one's actually three ounces. And I've got lots of bits of bow broken up meat. And what I'm doing is I'm sort of compressing that into the cage feeder. So it goes totally against my normal theory of feeder fishing where I want the feed to come out the feeder once it's on the bottom. With this meat, I actually really want most of it to stay in the feeder. But what that's doing is you can imagine the, the scent trail that's giving off of particles of meat and oils from the meat that's hopefully going to attract the fish up to my hook bait. So that's definitely working well today. So I'm not really feeding a lot, but I think it's giving a great attraction to the fish. The bites have been really positive. Obviously, I'm fishing very close in. And the bites have been very, very positive bites, even on that, that stiffer raven top. Just hold that one up. That one's perhaps the biggest of the day. That one's a bit over three pounds, perhaps three and a half pounds. Great scrap. And I think I'm going to make that the last fish of the day. It's been a quick session, but what an enjoyable time I've had. Caught some wonderful fish in a beautiful place. And I'm going to get back to work this afternoon. So we'll put that one back.
There it goes. What a wonderful session. Thanks for watching.